Yeah. I'm David Ezrati, and it is good to be back in Trotwood. I got a real good feel for Trotwood. Unfortunately, we're trying to save the sale of all, and I worked with Mary Kay Zappia, I worked with a lot of the commission chain, uh, members that are here tonight, and a whole bunch of Trotwood businesses. We started an organization called Savisco, and I did the best I could, and it was really good to be out here quite a bit and learn. But we're here to talk about why I'm running for Congress. Um, I do know what the Second Court of Appeals is because I had to go there once. <laughs> had to go there because Mike Turner was having secret meetings with the Dayton City Commission, and one of the meetings he had was to make sure that citizens didn't speak at the commission meetings because, God forbid, he has to listen to us little people. I got wind of it. I staged a silent protest. He had me arrested. We went to court over and over and over. The city wouldn't stop. We offered to settle. We said, if you drop all charges, I won't sue. They said, no, you've got to plead guilty to one. And I said, no. And so I won all the way up to the last appeal they had was the US Supreme Court. And finally, they decided to say no. So um, I have beaten Mike Turner, and I'm not even a lawyer. <laughs> but you know, my history with him goes back to the very first time I ran. When I was Ryan's age, I went and ran for mayor, because I didn't think Clay Dixon was doing a very good job in the city of Dayton. Um, apparently the voters didn't either, and they turned him out for Mike Turner, which is pretty amazing considering Dayton is a very, very, very democratic city. So um, yeah, it's my fault, OK? <laughs> um, his Cinderella candidacy and you know the, how he's progressed has, I've watched it all. I know him inside and out. And the main reason I am running is because I know what made him, and I know what can take him down. I know where he's weak. I know what he's done wrong. And he's done a lot wrong. This man is so in bed with lobbyists, political action committees, special interests, that when NCR pulled out to go to Georgia, he was quoted in the paper saying, well, they'll have to buy themselves another congressman. They were one of his biggest supporters. I was outside panhandling out in Beaver Creek, outside one of his big donors. I didn't get $18,000 from them. Um, I did get pulled over by the Beaver Creek police who were trying to enforce a law that wasn't even on the books yet. And I wasn't, I had already left. I was driving away. They never saw me panhandling. They still came after me. Okay, so you can watch the video on YouTube. But the reality is, is I know Mike Turner, and I know what the problem is in this country. It's not Congress, it's not the President. I could say it's apathetic voters, but that's not even it. The problem is money in politics. We have to take the money out of politics, and the only way we're gonna take the money out of politics is to do what we watched Gary Leitzel do to Ryan McGlynn, which is beat somebody with a lot less money. You're not gonna outraise Mike Turner. You're not gonna beat him dollar for dollar. You're not going to beat him unless you really know where to, where to strike and be able to strike fast and strike hard. Now, before I moved in the city of Dayton and started my crusade to save South Park, I was in the Army. I served with 7th and 11th Special Forces Group. I'm not afraid to take on the man. I've been, had my windows shot out when I was campaigning. I've been assaulted by some people that I'd rather leave out of it. But the reality is, is it's going to get very nasty. And Mike Turner's come after me before, and I've been okay with it. But I can put content on the web faster and harder than anybody else can. If you search for Mike Turner and graph interruption, you'll end up on my site. Because since 2005, I've been following the dirt and putting it out there. I was the one who exposed his wife for having a GSA schedule to do business with the government and doing work for the Army Corps of Engineers while her husband sat on the Armed Services Committee. I'm the one exposed that she got work from the Home Depot Political Action Committee, even though they're in Georgia and she's up here. I have the dirt. I know all about the Dayton Development Coalition, which is taking our tax dollars and using them for lobbying. I am not going to back down. I am not afraid. And I have the, the tools and technology, thanks to being an advertising business, to do this efficiently, cheaply, and fast. And that's what you're going to need. You're going to need somebody who can move faster 
from the big man. So, I'm David Osrani. You've got my literature. Hope you read it. Go to my website. I've got tools for you to volunteer, and I need donations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and I've been uh, <coughs> elected in my neighborhood, and I've been elected um, in my organization, BOB 108, where I've served for the last five or six years now as the um, executive officer of that organization. But um, I've probably run for office more times than all these pe other people <laughs> combined. I know the process and I know how it works. What have I learned? Uh, I've run for office an awful lot of times, so I can tell you this. Um, I have not ever seen a 10 candidate field before. The most I've seen is six when I ran against Clay Dixon the first time. So there is definitely a larger interest in people running. We had an event in Fairborn, and there were a lot of seats where there were three candidates for one party, two for another. So there is an interest in change, and I am seeing that. I think that people are fed up. Congress has very low approval ratings. People want to have choices. People want to see change. I can tell you from what I've been doing on, online, people are talking about politics in a different way than they have before. And I think they are ready to be activated. And it's up to us, not just the candidates, but all of us, to talk to our friends, talk to our neighbors, and say, if you really want to see this country head in the right direction, you have to get out there and vote. And you have to be informed. And it, so that's what we have to do. And I've been working at keeping people informed by putting things up on every one of the events. I've got video. So. Thanks so much. That's right.